and welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults a British family right across to the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life, whether to stay in the UK or to move to Australia. Martin and Andrea Burnley from Leeds are considering swapping their daily grind in the UK for a new, more relaxed life down under. I've always wanted to go to Australia, ever since I can remember. But Martin has taken a while to get used to the whole idea. First, I didn't want to go. I want to entertain it. Uh, so I think she's more, more up for it than what I am. Will they be able to leave the stability of a large family and a young granddaughter behind? If I had to leave both my children behind and my granddaughter, I'd be devastated. I really would. I think it would make the move a lot harder. There'll be plenty of tears. Plenty of them. I'm going to miss you and I love you. Can the Burleys make the move to where they're wanted down under? Around 150 people a day migrate to Australia in search of a better life. And anyone who's under the age of 45 and on the skills shortage list could be heading down under at the head of the queue. But for all these families, how hard is the decision? And do they find what they're looking for? 20 British families have been pushed to breaking point as they find out about real life down under. And after just one week, they'll have to vote one way or the other, whether to stay in the UK or to move to Australia. Martin and Andrea Burnley live in Leeds with their son, Michael. Andrea has always dreamt of living somewhere with a better climate. I've always wanted to go to Australia, ever since I can remember. And we tried a few times to go, and something's always got in the way. 44-year-old husband Martin would be the main visa applicant and would have to find a good job as a satellite dish fitter. But he's taken some persuading. Originally, it was Andrea's idea. Uh, she's always wanted to go there ever since I met her, really. And just recently, I seem to have come round a bit over the last four or five years. I really like the look of the country and what have you, so, yeah, it seems to be appealing to me more. I still think Andrew wants to go more than me. 19-year-old son Michael isn't sure about the move. I've got a lot of mixed thoughts about Australia. I don't know what to expect. I'm just uh, hoping to uh, find some new friends, hopefully get into sports that I'm playing now, and uh, have, a, have a bit of a better lifestyle, really. He and older brother Paul play rugby league for Middleton Rovers. And rugby's a big part of the family's social life. Dad coached me when I was about five years old to about 12 years old. And uh, all we do in our family is play rugby, so I definitely have to try and find a team out there that'll suit me, and I'll definitely give it a go playing rugby in Australia. Andrea hopes that her eldest son, Paul, will also want to eventually make the move down under. Paul lives with his girlfriend, and he's got a three-year-old daughter, and he's finding it increasingly difficult to find work over here. And, and his girlfriend's actually at university, studying to be a teacher, and their plan is um, to come over as soon as she's qualified. Um, but what they say and what they actually do when the time comes. So that is the one thing. I think if they definitely said they wasn't coming, I, that might sway me. But they say they are. I'd be devastated if I got over there and loved it and then they said they weren't coming. Andrea's played a huge part in bringing up Honey Lily so far. She's three now, but I do worry that she'll forget the closeness. I know she won't forget me, but the closeness that we have. I mean, the minute she walks through the door, she's just screaming my name, looking for me. Um, big hugs and kisses. And that's what I'll miss. And, and I do, I am scared that she'll, she'll forget that. She wouldn't just be leaving her son and only granddaughter. The whole family lives nearby and will be hugely missed. My dad's got cancer, but he's a fighter. And he just tells me I must go. He um, applied to New Zealand before I was born and got in. Um, but then they never got round to it. And he says it's one thing that he really, really regrets. That's probably where it's come from, this emigrating, because I know he's always wanted to do it and never did. And Andrea's got a phobia which she's never faced up to. We're concerned about the spiders. Uh, it's a big, big worry for Andrea, more than me. Um, I can't touch them, I can't go anywhere near them. So, and I can't be in the same room as them, they have to be removed. 
so I don't know how I'm going to go up. Having brought the children up, Andrea and Martin are now looking to downsize. Martin's 44. The cutoff for applicants on the skilled migrants visa list is 45. So this is the Burnley's last chance. Well, it is now or never. Because if we don't, if we don't get through by, by this time next year, then that's it. We, we're not. We're never going to get there. We're sending the Burnleys to Darwin for a chance to experience life down under. It's a small city with a warm climate and has got some of the best rugby league in Australia. In Darwin, they can still say they're northerners, but will they fit in? We found three different lifestyles for the family, each one offering a brand new way of life for them to try on their budget. But which one will be the most suitable? Coastal living will provide Andrea with the peace and relaxation she's looking for and Martin's job will see him travel all over Darwin. And there are plenty of activities for son Michael, so life on the coast should suit them fine. But the Burnley's budget of £225,000 might be stretched in this area. Three bedroom houses cost around £340,000 on average, so a dream home on the coast might be pushing it. So, very different from their life in the UK. But what about the second option? City life in Darwin is cosmopolitan with plenty of classy shopping and eating out. But property prices have risen sharply in recent years. Average prices for three bedroom apartments and houses are in excess of £300,000. Although if you shop around, you can find cheaper options. It would suit Martin by reducing his morning travel times and son Michael would be close to Darwin's buzzing social scene. That all looks very inviting. But what about the third option? Life in rural areas of Darwin will provide the Burnleys with plenty of outdoor activities. Properties here are spacious and more affordable with an average house price of £250,000. However, Martin may face a half-hour commute and Michael would have to travel into the city for socialising. And there's one thing you get a lot more of in the country, which Andrea may find hard to handle. Three very different possibilities for our family to try. So which one did we decide would suit them best? We think the Burnleys are most suited to life in the city, so we're sending them to the suburb of Larrakia. It will give Martin the flexibility for work and Michael won't be too far from the action in the centre. And for their £225,000 budget, they should be able to get a reasonable three to four bedroom property. We've got Martin a job to try out. Hi Martin, uh, I'm Mark, welcome to Darwin. Found some properties to show them. I don't like it at all. Do you? No. I expected from Australia. Bigger house, bigger garden. And given them a taste of the Aussie lifestyle. That is absolutely fantastic. Will it live up to expectations? Quite a shock with that. Yeah. It's time for the Burnleys to take the plunge. The journey takes them across three continents and 8,600 miles. They're used to flying to Spain on holiday. The flight to Australia is a world away from that. I feel better for getting here now. I'm tired. I'm tired. Looking, looking forward to it, actually. Looking forward to it. Be good, I hope. <laughs> it's the first time any of the Burnleys have ever been to Australia. It's midwinter and 32 degrees in the shade. Not a bad start, then. The Burnleys will be staying in a three-bedroom apartment on the second floor of a block in the Larrakay district. So, what will they make of it? The apartment is classic Aussie city living, open plan and designed to create space and light. This is nice, isn't it? But Martin knows what's important. I've got a nice big telly. That's what you notice first. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Get that air con. Smaller than I thought, though. Is it? What? Yeah. Now they've got the mirrors everywhere. You expect Australia to be massive, don't you? Yeah. Super. The master bedroom has a little surprise. Oh, we've got en suite as well. Did you get that, Andrea? An en suite. Very good. Through the shared utility and bathroom is the second bedroom. Looks like your room, Mike. So uh, you can have this one because you haven't got an en suite. This will do me nicely. There's our en suite. No, we've got our own en suite. Oh, yeah, the same bathroom. No, it's not. I've got an en suite. There you go. Don't have a look to prove it. We'll have a look then. We've got an en suite. Oh dear, do we see our first disagreement already? And what's that? Is it... 
See, I told you they were non-sweet. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think they're looking for. Sorry, Martin. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. But at least Martin's looking beyond the TV and appreciating the open plan layout. I want an open kitchen like this, just bigger, onto a garden. Nice, isn't it? It's massive. It's for an apartment. And it's got a view of sorts. That's what I told It is, isn't it? Lovely. The boys seem to like the apartment's functionality. I think it's very nice. Yeah, I like it. Plenty of space, loads of room. Looks, looks I'm nice. Not <laughs> <laughs> it's an apartment, I never considered an apartment at all. Lots of traffic. Yeah, there's a main road there, so. There's some kind of industrial building over the road, another hotel. And a big water tower. But Andrea has high expectations of life down under. No sea view. Is this a taste of things to come, or will she find her perfect home? Back in the UK, the Burnleys live in a four-bedroom semi in South Leeds. It's a good-sized house next to the park in an area they love, but they want more. In Australia, they're looking for a spacious three- or four-bedroom detached house with a pool, but their budget is a modest £225,000 with a mortgage. So, can they stretch their budget and get something that they really want? We found the Burnleys three properties to examine in Darwin. Let's hope they live up to Andrea's exacting standards. First up is a fully furnished two-bedroom unit overlooking the park and has views of the beach. It's on the market for £220,000, so should be within their budget. But there's a small catch. It's on the fourth floor and there's no lift. Uh, don't like that, <laughs> don't like all them steps. It's no good. It's too warm, too warm for steps. So, not a great first impression, and they haven't even made it inside. What will they make of it? Small but nice. Nice view. Need some of your DIY skills. Yeah, it'd have to yeah. a bit of work done, won't it? Mm-hmm. I'd like a mat. A bit cramped. It is a bit, isn't it? Perhaps they'll have better luck in the master bedroom. Not a bad mm. size, but... I expected bigger. Yeah. Oh dear, it's not getting any better and size appears to be a problem with Andrea. Martin's got issues with the bathroom. Don't like that at all. It'd have to be ripped out when refurbed. Oh. Got to have a shower cubic, aren't you? Got to have a mm. proper shower cubic on a bath. And a garden. Yeah, and a garden. And a garden. <laughs> and a pool. Uh-oh, our wish list seems to be getting longer. Maybe the open plan living area is enough to persuade them about living in an apartment. This is nice, I like this. I like the open plan. Yeah, I like the open plan, it looks good. It still needs a new kitchen. If you think of what we've got at home, this is our kitchen and dining room in one. That's all. No, yeah. it is. No, it's not. It's bigger than ours. No, it's bigger than ours. Miles bigger than ours. It's bigger than ours. There's more room in here than it is in ours. He isn't there. It's miles bigger. It's a lot it's bigger not, than ours. It's not as nice, but it is bigger. Yeah, but we've got conservatory and the living room as well as diner kitchen. We've got a this is just it. Balcony. One. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot, still a lot bigger than I love than no us. separate rooms to get away from kids. You won't be told, will you? It's a lot bigger <laughs> room than us. Still not impressed? Well, how about the sea view? This is nice. I like this area. Lovely mm. view. See the sea. It's a nice view. Beautiful view. You can just see the sea. Just. Need a garden. Definitely. It's not much for your money, though, is it? Not really. In Darwin, even a sea view this size is going to cost you, so what's the final verdict? I like it, but I don't like the, the fact that it's up four flights of steps and uh, I've got no garden. I don't like it at all. Don't you? No. I think the, the sleeping area is it's very small when it's sleeping area. Mm -hmm. I don't like um, the decor, the kitchen, the bathroom, <laughs> but it's their things you can change. I like the area, um, but no, I definitely want a house, certainly not an apartment and more space, more bedrooms. I expected from Australia, bigger house, bigger garden. Not a lot right with this property then. Let's hope we do better with property number two. This is a three bedroom house in a quiet cul-de-sac. It has uniquely designed indoor and outdoor living space and some hidden extras. 
It's on the market for around £275,000, so over their budget. But maybe it's what they're looking for. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah, this is better. Good size. Nice kitchen. I like it. It is a big kitchen, wide. Plenty of room, isn't it? Yeah. Nice big open room. Perhaps this is a spacious living Andrea was after. I like this area. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I can sit and watch telly while I can see you cooking. <laughs> I like the quietness around here as well. Mm, typical cold as isn't it? Yeah. But she's not keen on getting to know the current inhabitants. I don't like all these cobwebs. <laughs> no. <laughs> this property's won awards for its unique design. It's split over two buildings joined in the middle by an open plan conservatory. I like how you come outside to the tables and then you've got your bedrooms. Yes. Yeah, unique in that actually. Yeah. You can cook outside, you can eat inside on the cover if it's too hot or yeah. it starts raining. Oh look, it goes straight down there, joins, joins straight back onto it. I like this. It's like two separate houses. It is, isn't it? Good sized rooms. These cupboards under, yeah? Oh, this is nice. Got like They're a... used to all the space, aren't they? Yeah. Got like a little office here, look. So it's quite deceiving from outside this, isn't it? You didn't want to expect it to be this big, would you? It's, yeah, it's definitely got some space in it. The bathroom is laid out over three separate areas. Where's the so, bathroom? So where's the bathroom then? Where's the bathroom? Hmm. It's a strange one. Try this. Ah. Oh, it's a shower room. Oh, it's a shower, shower room. Shower room. Not like chicken in there. Yeah, toilet, yeah. Separate toilet. Separate toilet. Oh, Outside, Andrea begins to notice some problems. A swimming pool. Yeah, no pool. Or even hot tub. It's just cobwebs everywhere. I guess the garden's out for you then. Mm. <laughs> you want in a garden? Oh, yeah, nice and open. <laughs> Nothing here. If you want coolness, you put an umbrella up. It's a garden. Just round the corner is a surprise which might just persuade her. Oh, wow. She did. Oh, I've got a pool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. I like that. It's unusual, but it's oh, completely no separate. Oh, yeah. This is better. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's just made it all better now, yeah, is that? Yeah, it has, that's yeah. That's solid, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's really there, nice. It? Oh, yeah. Oh, I do like this. That's yeah, nice, isn't it? This is what you want to come to Australia for. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So you want to come home, so I think hard day's work. So how did they find property number two? I would change the bathroom, make it a bit more modern. Certainly flatten out the garden and hopefully you don't have to have as many trees as this. Andrea's already moving in and planning those improvements. So what do the boys think? It's nice and quiet and secluded. And it's, and it's cold, it's out of way, it's a cul-de-sac. Like the, the previous apartment on one of the main road and you could hear cars up and down every 10 seconds. Whereas here, you, can't, you can even hear a pole from here, which is, uh, which is really good. But yeah, very positive about this house. Definitely way better than the last one. Before the Burnleys get too excited, we've got one more property to show them. Property three is another apartment, but this one's on a resort and is fully serviced, with a gym and pool to add to its three double bedrooms. It's in a nice older suburb of Darwin and is just five minutes' drive to the city centre. It's on the market for £320,000, so it's over the Burnleys' budget, but it might just give them something to aspire to. There's even a cunning solution for all those stairs. This is nice, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, I like this. Lovely. I like very the shape nice. of it. Very nice kitchen. Oh, my kind of kitchen. My oh, your fridge. Beautiful, that, isn't it? Already, Martin's looking out for his favourite feature, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Is that a television screen, that? Don't know. TV? Don't know. Oh, that's his control system. Oh, oh it that. controls all lights and stuff and music and that. Oh, that's clever, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm impressed with that. Security. You can see what's outside and Temperature stuff. for today and tomorrow. Good there, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's clever, is that, isn't it? This property is obviously pushing the boys' buttons, but Andrea doesn't seem so sure. Living area is small. I don't like these tiles. You do? Oh. They're nice to look at, but they're not nice to clean. Small, but... 
with it being this bit. I don't think it looks it's comfortable. I do, I think it's, it's quite smart. Newcastle Knights. Andrea's not impressed with the living area, but maybe the view will change her mind. This is nice. Yeah, this is nice, isn't it? Apart from the scrapyard, it's a beautiful view. Yeah, the scrapyard's not very good, but yeah, it is nice. A lovely view. Well, it seems to be winning points, but Andrea still has a problem with the size of this property. I think it's quite small. Yeah. I love the kitchen. But I just think this is slightly smaller, because this is everything. So it is more modern, so probably that's probably meant to be yeah. a bit smaller. Perhaps they'll be more impressed with the bedroom. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah, I like this. And this one is full of hidden surprises. Straight on to the patio. You can go in there. You can go in the spiders. Walking wardrobe. Wow, wow, look at that. There you go, Mum. What more do you want? Where would you put your clothes, Martin? I don't know. Suddenly, opinions start to change. Yeah, I like this. Mm. I like that walking wardrobe. It's brilliant. For an apartment? It's very good, isn't it? You never considered an apartment at all. That's really nice, is that? Yeah, I like this. Hat collection. I like that. I think yeah, it's superb. It's, really nice. it's really good, isn't it? It's, yeah, I like that. Very nice. I've never seen a man so impressed by a walk-in wardrobe. It's another good size room, isn't it? Yeah. It's on the it's on balcony, but yeah. Nice view. Yeah, it is, isn't it? They've all been good views, aren't they? If it's ever been to so far, so. The master bedroom has a balcony and view of its own, if you like the look of apartment nice. blocks. This is nice. See again? See see again, yeah. Just see, see. The pool looks very inviting. Considering that we don't like apartments, it's nice, isn't it? It is, yeah. Nice swimming pool. Mm. Well, paddle pool, maybe. Yeah, I'm impressed, I like this. It's nice. This property is based around a shared environment and facilities, which includes a pool, a barbecue area, and even a putting green. This is like Mike, isn't it? No, I do like this. <laughs> Sound fuel, isn't it? I'll come down here for hours. <laughs> I could some bed there. Uh, no, this is a golf area. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's nice. So, how does it match up? Uh, very nice. I liked it. Uh, good design, all modern. That's a lot better than the other apartment. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Not my room, not the other place. Yeah. yeah. Not more amenities. It's just not for us. We want our own little plot of land and little house. You couldn't say there was anything wrong with it apart from the fact it's an apartment, not exactly what we're looking for. The Burnleys have seen three very different properties. Property one was affordable, but for Andrea, it just didn't hit the mark. Perhaps the sea view was a little oversold. I don't like it at all. Don't you? No. I don't like um, the decor, the kitchen, the bathroom. Um, but no, I definitely want a house, certainly not an apartment. I expected from Australia, bigger house, bigger garden. Property two really hit the mark with its clever design and secluded outdoor spaces. But it was £25,000 over their budget. This is better. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's just made it all better now. Yeah, that's yeah. solid, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I do like this. Yeah, yeah. If you want to come home, so I think I'd do it. Property three had the wow factor, but life in a resort wasn't for them, and apartment living just didn't push Andrea's buttons. It's just not for us. We want our own little plot of land and little house. So, how will they vote? Based on the properties that we've seen here in Darwin, our vote goes to... You Australia. Care. What's all that about? It's you, you don't care. Well, at least I've made a vote, you haven't. <laughs> Can't make my mind up. <laughs> right. Anything you care? Because I think the properties are quite expensive over there. It's big enough though. Yeah, but it's still, still expensive. Yeah, but you're not paying for it, are you? Mm. I'll be at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right for you, isn't it? Just, I'll well, just live at home with my mum and dad. <laughs> Obviously, the, the apartments were expensive, but we didn't want an apartment anyway. And I'm quite surprised how expensive the uh, the bungalow was. But uh, the, the Darwin is quite expensive anyway for property, from what we've seen. So, uh, yeah, a bit cheaper in the UK, I think. The Burnleys will be really stretched if they want their dream home. 
Martin will have to maximise his earning potential if this move is really going to happen. Back in the UK, Martin earns around £30,000 as an aerial and satellite dish fitter. If I could find the work, I think I'd be able to do it. Uh, it would take a while to get into it because it'll work, work different ways and things. I think they use a lot bigger dishes than what we use, so, but yeah, once you get into it, I think I should be okay with it. This often involves long hours and weekends. We work five over seven, so we work a lot of weekends. And I think it'd be nice if I could get some weekends off. That'd be really, really good. In Australia, he's looking for similar work. So we've set up a meeting with Mark Sellers, boss of a satellite installation business. Martin knows this could be the make or break for his family. I feel nervous because obviously it's going to be an interview as well as doing some work. Uh, in another country, uh, but also this is very important because if I don't get a job, obviously I won't be able to come to this country. And uh, we're seriously thinking about migrating to, to Australia if possible. So it's very important. Martin gets onto the skilled migration workers list as an electrician and would have to do a further test in Australia as proof of his skills. After a quick introduction, he's straight round to the back of the workshop for a look at what life could be like down under. Okay, this is where we do uh, our uh, repairs and put all our equipment together. Uh -huh. James is just here repairing one of them. Unlike his job in the UK, they also do repairs here, and that's not the only difference. Size dish is that? This is 85 centimetre dish. That's our standard size dish here in Australia. Right, this is a lot bigger than what we use. We just use, tend to use a 43 centimetre. Dish. Yeah, that, uh, uh, just, you, just, you just tend just... to have uh, a stronger satellite that's in your right, part of yeah. the world and more, more satellites to uh, come off on. But there's no time for idle chat. They've got to get down to work. Mark takes Martin to their latest job. And this project isn't a small one. It's a 33-storey building with a faulty dish, and Mark's been called in to fix it. Only thing is, it's right at the top. You won't need to worry about gym membership doing this job. With different dish sizes and a whole new list of rules and regulations to follow, will Martin be qualified enough to do the Aussie version of his UK job? Modulation error, right? That, that dish is aligned really well now, so we can um, now put it back together. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks, thanks guys. As Mark and Martin leave the boys to finish off, Andrea is somewhere far below them, doing something most girls love shopping. She's taking the opportunity to buy some presents for granddaughter Honey Lily. Oh, these are lovely. Honey would love these. If I bought her anything like this, Gemma would go mad. Noisy. She loves music and dancing. Yeah, but that looks really great. It's not only Honey Lily that's on her mind, she's also worried about Martin's work prospects. Martin's work is the biggest factor because he loves his job but he hates working on a weekend um, but more importantly I want him to be able to enjoy it. Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Andrea is hoping they might be able to persuade Paul, Gemma and Honey Lily to follow in their footsteps but they wouldn't come immediately. If we decided to move and move quite quickly it would be at least three years before um, Paul and Gemma decided to come over here if they did. Um, and we just miss so much of Hunter. Um, and I'm very worried that even if they did make the move, I wouldn't have the same bond that I have with her now. And I don't think you could ever get that back. Andrea's a devoted grandmother. Leaving Honey Lily behind could be a real deal breaker. She gets upset when I leave, then I don't know if I'll be able to make, to get on that plane. She still has to persuade Martin if it's the right move for them. It's all down to the job. Will he get the hours and conditions he wants? Generally, we work Monday to Friday. Most of us have our Saturday and Sundays off because oh, of our super. outdoor lifestyle. OK. What's the pay structure like? Pay structure is $55,000 a year. Uh, plus there is a bonus system, depending on the project, you'll get a certain percentage of that project. So you've got a good bonus for your Christmas break, because we do close down for two weeks for Christmas. And of course we have a superannuation system uh -huh. in Australia, which is your pension system, which you would get 9% on top of your, uh, uh, your annual uh, salary That's as well. That's very good, that, yeah, very and, good. Uh, any overtime that you do uh, from 430 uh, is time and a half, and then after the, the two, two hours it goes to double time. Well, that sounds very reasonable. Just one other question, when can I start? <laughs> Hold on a minute, Martin. You haven't even made your mind up to move to Oz yet, but it looks like he'll fit right in. Martin, it's nice to meet you. Good luck with your move to Australia. 
hopefully it all works out well. Thank you for your time, very much appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for calling, Cheers, mate, Bye. thank you, bye. bye. I wonder how he'll vote. Based on the work that I've seen in Darwin, my vote goes to... Australia. Well, work seems to have sold the move to Australia for Martin. But does he think his wife, Andrea, will be willing to take the risk of not seeing her granddaughter for long periods of time? You can't put a price on watching your granddaughter grow up. There's no price on that. And uh, obviously, I don't know. I don't, I don't think, I don't think we, we won't even consider what, what uh, the money side of it was. Well, we just say, look, we're not prepared to not see Honey growing up. And we just, I, I, I'm confident that she'd want to go back, she really would. And we just, we just go back, we just sell up and go back. Andrea Burnley has worked hard to persuade her husband to make the move down under. And he'd turned me down a few times um, when the kids were little. And Martin's getting a bit old now, so it's um, now or never. He's 45 and this is their last chance to emigrate on the skilled worker visa. Their look at Aussie properties didn't go according to plan. I don't like it at all. Do you? No. But at least Martin could find work. I'm feeling very, very confident about Australia. It's, it's, everything just seems to be pointing in the right direction for me. But what happens when they hear from their loved ones back home? For the Burnleys, this decision is much harder than they ever thought. You never know what's around the corner. Yeah, there will be tears without a doubt. There'll be plenty of tears, plenty of them. Martin's job could provide them with a steady income, but if they're going to afford that dream home, they have to get a good price for their house back in Leeds. Martin and Andrea bought their four-bedroom semi in Leeds 10 years ago for £70,000. They now believe it to be worth around 205000 but has it held its value? We sent two estate agents round and showed Martin and Andrea the footage of the valuations. Looks strange, doesn't it? <laughs> This is the sitting room, uh, nicely presented, good sized room with a gas fire, wooden floors. That's so strange. We have a new looking open plan kitchen with uh, modern appliances, leading on to a conservatory overlooking the garden and uh, barbecue area. Nice size uh, master bedroom, plenty of room for furniture and good sized door bed. I think we're in Barbie heaven here. <laughs> Obviously a very proud little girl's room, a fairly small room, room just enough for a single bed, but perhaps um, also good for an office uh, or just a normal uh, single bedroom. This will be the child's second, second room, but a good sized double bedroom. Clearly decorated for a child at the moment, but with potential to convert into a main adult's room with a lovely view of the garden. The Matic conversion room. Currently, obviously, uses a spare room. A little bit tight on the headroom there to be used as an everyday bedroom, but probably fine in case of emergencies and guest visitors. <laughs> and also, perhaps, good for, good as an office with a nice dormer window. I think this is a very well presented property. Clearly, it's been redecorated recently and it's presented very well with a nice um, modern feel internally. I would value this property at 189995 for a quick sale. A little less than they'd expected, but will a second opinion be any better? Losing space from the second bedroom where the staircase goes up for the loft conversion is, is a bit of an issue. Um, people do like to have the two double bedrooms on that floor. If it was a forced sale figure, uh, probably between the region of 160 to 165,000 is achievable uh, within a, a relatively yeah. short period of time. Wow, that's a lot lower than they'd hoped for. What did plus with that? No, very shocked, considering yeah. what the others have gone for in the area. Yeah, very shocked at that. Shocked at the first one, never mind the second one. Yeah, no. Even worse, one at 160, 165. Andrea's convinced the house should have held its value better. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely surprised, surprised that, yeah. Very yeah. surprised. I thought it'd definitely get over 200. I thought it'd have been, yeah, I would have thought 195, 200. Mm. Yeah. The, the climate hasn't really hit. Um, our area, you know, because you keep an eye on the house prices over the years and it hasn't really hit. Um, we've seen a small decrease in house prices, but not a massive decrease. 
So I didn't think it hit, it would hit us that bad, but I do think mm. those valuations were quite low. I think they were. I think they were quite low. The value of their house has come as a bit of a shock. The Burnleys will have to take a close look at the cost of living in Darwin to see what they can actually afford. We've prepared a comparison between their living expenses in the UK and in Australia to find out which leaves them better off. It's not just the house you have to pay for when you move here. 5% stamp duty. Mm. Quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Mortgage repayments per month. It's a lot more than what we're paying now. That's actually quite expensive. Rates, council tax, that's cheaper. Is it? Yeah. Martin's worried about the cost of his grooming. Well, manicure's going down, drain out of it, that. £100 a month for a manicure. £50 a month, $100. That's about what I pay now. Mm -hmm. I'm still letting it do it myself. Fuel price is cheaper. And we're paying about a pound. But you travel more here. Yeah. But then you're not into car jams over here. Mm -hmm. For the motoring cost, for £25 a month for registration, that's quite expensive actually. Compared to you can get a quite a small car in the UK for £35 a year. Mm. So what's the final reckoning? God, I spend too much at home. It is affordable. The it's just the, it's the mortgage that was yeah. the, what, what the real surprise. It's, uh, but at least it's only one thing that we have to work on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, biggest thing, but well, the biggest thing of all, really, as well, isn't it? But yeah. that was a quite a shock with that. Yeah, I was shocked, quite shocked with that. Yeah. So I'd rather compromise on the property and get something that we can work to rather than have a bigger mortgage. Yeah, definitely. You don't want a big mortgage. No. The last thing you want. You've got to compromise sometimes, don't you? Yeah, so we'll yeah, do it definitely. That way. Let's get a slightly smaller house. It looks like the Burnleys wouldn't be able to get the dream home straight away. So, on cost of living, how will they vote? Based on what we've seen in Australia regarding the cost of living, our vote goes to... UK. UK. Um, I think it's... Um, although the wages may be higher, the, um, it's just the mortgages. If you could come to Australia completely mortgage-free, or at least to Darwin completely mortgage-free, then the cost of living would be a lot better. It's just the mortgage price and the house prices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. There's one Australian resident Andrea is desperate to avoid. If you don't like spiders, look away now. If there's one thing people hate most about moving down under, it's the invertebrate arachnid. Of the 40,000 species of spider, Australia has more than 2,000 of them, but only 12 are known to be dangerous to humans. There are four species you're likely to come into contact with in Australia. Curator of the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory, Richard Cullen takes us through them. One of the biggest spiders in Australia is actually found here in Darwin. This is the whistling spider. Whistling spiders can reach 17 centimetres in diameter. Their legs are covered in hairs. Um, and when they are irritated, they can rub the legs together and make quite an audible whistling sound. Uh, they can bite. Fortunately, it's not deadly. The whistling spider is one of the largest of spiders around Darwin, but it's nowhere near as deadly as a very small spider called the redback which the female can be, can be fatal. There's been no deaths in Australia from redbacks since the 1960s because of the development of an anti venine for their bites. They live in areas where it's permanently dry, such as sheds or under wood. I've even seen them underneath the seats in the changing rooms at public, at public swimming pools. If you do get bitten by one of these, you would experience an intense pain at the site of the bite very rapid swelling. If you do happen to be bitten by a spider, first you should ice the wound, place the spider into a container and then get to a hospital. This is a male funnel web spider. And I certainly wouldn't be doing this when it was alive. They live in burrows down in moist area, moist ground, and uh, can deliver a uh, very painful bite when irritated. And that bite can be lethal. 
in Australia, in the cities at least, there are services now that will come and remove a snake if you happen to have it in your house. But for spiders, that's not the case. You're on your own. If you found one of these in your property or on your house, under no circumstances, touch it. One of the spiders that really is, causes most problems by interacting with humans is one that's not venomous at all. These huntsmen are very, very prevalent. They are all through the year, especially in the build-up time, which is the time prior to the wet season, they really are very prevalent. And they'll be in every house um, in or, or right throughout Australia. Our eight-legged friends may cause some panic, but they have as much right to be there as we do. In Australia, there are lots of spiders, and people do come into contact with them all the time. But we've got to realise they've got an important place in the ecology of the country. If there were no spiders, we'd be knee-deep in blowflies and other pests. If Andrea's going to get over her fear of spiders, she needs to meet them face to face. So, for a real taste of the Northern Territory's lifestyle, it's best to hit the outback. The Burnleys are off on a road trip deep into the Aussie bush. They're going to Litchfield National Park, 130 kilometres southwest of Darwin. It's not only popular with tourists. First stop are a field full of magnetic termite mounds. Built entirely by termites and reaching heights of up to three meters, they are amazing feats of architecture, complete with arches, tunnels, chimneys, and insulation. Plenty of them. Is it? That one's only small, it's all grey, but taller ones have got the browner at the top. Yeah, that way. The mounds are given the term magnetic as their flat sides are constructed to face east and west, thus avoiding the sun at the hottest part of the day. So they found them over there. The ones over there, they're massive, them ones over there, aren't they? I think they're like one or two or something. Yeah, I'd have a wand on <laughs> If Andrea's going to come and live in Australia, she's got to face one of her deepest fears. Look at that. Oh, I want it back, it's massive. <laughs> There's about seven there, isn't there? In that little space. So imagine that, just... how many is in the whole of this. <laughs> Luckily, this one isn't poisonous. Come on. There's just time for a look at one of the park's most stunning features, Florence Falls. Now you wouldn't find that in Leeds. Wow, look at that. Mm. Trees that in the way. Unbelievable. Wow. Oh God, swimming in there. Oh, Imagine yes, jumping please. off that. Yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. What a sight. I'd love to go right underneath where it flushes into the water. Yeah. Be amazing. It's no good just looking at it. Get your cozies on. As the boys cool off, Andrea has a chance to reflect on the trip so far. And Honey Lily's never far from her thoughts. While we've actually been here, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, knowing that we're going back home, how that away on your mind, knowing that I'm not going to see her for months and months on end, even years. I think when the, the time comes, it'll be really, really upsetting. I don't know how I'll manage. The Burnleys are nearing the end of their trip and the pressure's on to make a decision. There is a time restraint on um, coming over to Australia. It is more now or never. Um, because Martin's 45 next year, so we definitely have to make our minds up. Martin may be 44, but the refreshing water's bringing out his youthful side. <laughs> I didn't want to get into the water. Um, crocodile signs. Um, but now they're in and it looks safe. I'm gonna gonna have a dip. Go, go, swim, go, swim, go, swim. <laughs> it's time to choose between the Aussie or British lifestyle. So how will they vote? Based on the lifestyle we've experienced so far, our vote goes to. Australia. Australia. 
The Burnleys enjoyed their outback experience, but life in a new country can be lonely. You have to find new ways of meeting the locals. The best way for the Burnleys to make new friends might be through a passion they share with many Australians, rugby league. I love rugby league. I'm a season ticket holder for, for, for my local team. Uh, and I've, I've coached. I coached for about eight, nine years with the local ones. I coached Michael from being five up to him being uh, 13. The Australian rugby league is absolutely fantastic. They, they, they play a lot better than us. The sport's great to watch. I mean, it's pretty good to watch over here, but when I've watched it on TV, it's excellent to watch over there. They'll miss the social scene they get from rugby back home. So how does Michael feel about making friends in Australia? I, say I should be fine out here. I should make quite a lot of new friends, especially if I start playing rugby. We're taking the Burnleys for a tour of the home of Darwin Rugby League, Richardson Park. Michael's going to see how well he fits in to the local team. Can he keep up with the Aussies? Come on, son, show them what us Brits are made of. Oops, butterfingers. That's more like it. Michael seems to be fitting in just fine. Um, I'm glad I found out the rugby up here because I didn't think they were at first, being Darwin, but uh, I have to see what level's like first before I make a move if I want to play over here or not because uh, it might be a bit too good for me. <laughs> At least I know I've got a sport up here that I love to do and uh, I'll definitely think about playing up here. Martin could see himself finding something to do on the sidelines. But yeah, I could see myself helping out or doing something if it were available to me, without a doubt. It'd be, it'd, be a, it'd be an honour with, with, with the facilities that they've got here. Even Andrea can see the benefits. It's um, definitely the plus sign to be able to come here and, and know that uh, Martin and Michael are really enjoying it. And just to come and have a, a nice day out in the sunshine, watching not only them play rugby but the children as well. Uh, coming through it would be a really nice, nice Sunday out. But she still hasn't forgotten her family back home. For leaving people behind. I have, it has weighed on my mind a lot, especially as you're walking around and seeing things and think, Paul would have loved this rubber ground. And I think it's things like that that um, are going to hit me most. After a hot day at the rugby ground, it's time to call off at the bar where the Burnleys meet up with a friendly local. Martin doesn't miss the opportunity to get the verdict on the Darwin lifestyle. It's just, I can't believe how, how the weather is it's fantastic for winter, it's, it's unbelievable. For the winter, it's yeah. pretty amazing, it's isn't it? Smashing, isn't it? It's you wake cool. up this morning and you, you look out your window and it was um, not a cloud in the sky, uh, going with a, with a prediction of 30 degrees, mm -hmm. um, no humidity to, to speak of. Um, you know, this is pretty much my apparel year round. Uh -huh. I, I don't own any jumpers, um, I don't have any uh, tracky pants. It, it's usually just board shorts, pair of sandals, t shirt, and off you go. As the sun sets over Darwin, the Burnleys have a lot to think about. Yeah, that is lovely, isn't it? It's totally picturesque. You've got kids playing in the, uh, in the sand, mum and dad down there with them. Uh, yeah, just something like that uh, you'd see off a postcard. Mm, it is, yeah. it's lovely. They've fallen for Darwin's laid-back lifestyle and friendly people, but it's almost time to make their final decision. the Burnley family have been in a quandary about making the move down under. To make matters harder, and before they make that final decision, they'll have to face messages from loved ones they'll be leaving behind. Hi, Andrea, Michael, Martin. Hello, my granddad. It's always beautiful. Oh, yeah. Martin. Oh, yeah. Oh, Martin. <laughs> yeah. The salt I mean, of the earth is our matter. Do anything for you, you know. Yeah. And he's always there if you want him. He's there. Yeah, he's around the corner. Um, for anything, a lift, anything, he's there. Oh, yeah, he's a terrific block. Yeah, he really is. I'd do anything yeah. for anybody. And Andrea is as well. She's really yeah. kind. She's, she's bonny. <laughs> she's, well, she'll help anybody. Well, she helps us a lot, doesn't she? She's still a big daughter. She's great. 
there's always that, isn't there? There's always, you know, you yeah. can always call on him, you know, if ever something's going wrong or all, like your personal life or all like that. Or... They all let you down. Yeah. Yeah. In five words, I'd say best family in the world. They're terrific people. Really are. We had Honey Lily when, I, when we were quite young, so yes, yes. they've helped us with everything and oh, yeah, been there all the time. I think, it, I think it will be very difficult for Honey. I think that she will realise that she's not just going to be able to jump in the van and come up and see him sort of thing. So, so when she cries, right. she cries for Nana. Yeah, she does sometimes, yeah. When she's poorly, she cries for Nana. Yeah. All the time. She does. You're our best friends. Well, actually, you're more like family to us and... Um, Moving to Australia, well, it's quite upsetting for me and Neil, but we wish you all the best. I think of Andrea as like, as like my mum as well. I'm as close to her as I am my mum. I'm <laughs> so much of funny, Lily. I couldn't imagine them not being here. I do really want them to go, because they really, really want to go. But I just couldn't imagine them not being here for us. It's cool. But, oh, I do miss you, but I hope everything's fine for you. I hope you like the place, and I hope you can settle down and really enjoy your life. And if your prospects are good, you'll go for it, love. Love you lots. If it's for you, check it with our love. We'll always be here for you if you need us. We love you lads, and we're going to miss you lads. So good luck. You know we're going to miss you, you know Honeyville is going to miss you and it's going to be really difficult for us all but I think that it's an opportunity of a lifetime and you've just got to go for it and I hope you, I hope you do it, I hope you stick to your guns and you do it. I missed you and I love you. Bye. I have a good cry hello. <laughs> Yeah. Makes it a lot harder, doesn't it? We've got some really good friends. We have, we've got some really good friends. Right, we're going to miss them if we, we do decide to move back. We just... Our family are our family. I know other people don't always get on with our family, but we do, we always have. It's so close, so... We ju it's just natural to us, but mm. our friends... You know, you make your friends, and, and we've got really, really good friends. We do everything together really, don't we? We spend yeah. a lot of time together. We spend a lot of time with the friends, don't we? We don't have a barbecue in our garden without inviting everybody around. Uh, everybody around, won't we? She's a little monkey. She's beautiful. <laughs> she really is. Yeah, she's going to be the hardest person to leave behind, isn't she? Yeah. It's going to be very difficult for us to do that. Mm. Whether we can do it or what, it's another matter. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> Oh, that's always the hardest part. Leaving behind their son and granddaughter is really tugging at the heartstrings. It's been a tough week and it's almost time to make the final decision. The Burnley's week in Australia has been a real mixture of highs and lows. I don't like it at all. Don't you? No. It's just cobwebs everywhere. I guess the garden's out for you then. Martin loved the job so much he couldn't wait to get stuck in. Just one other question, when can I start? <laughs> and some of the financial hurdles came as a bit of a shock. Mortgage repayments per month. It's a lot more than what we're paying now. The social rugby scene shouldn't be a problem for son Michael. So I should be fine out here, I should make quite a lot of new friends, especially if I start playing rugby. The hardest thing would be leaving their family behind. I missed you and I love you. It's nearly time to vote. So what's it to be? I know it'd be hard. Um, just leaving everything that you know behind, you know, your family, your friends. You need to ask a question, you know where to go. Um, you need to find anything out, you know where to go. Um, it's going to be really hard, but from what I've seen, um, I'm very impressed. For Martin, the real ramifications of the move are starting to sink in. I don't think my parents could. I know my dad certainly couldn't make the trip. He's, he's, he's just not up to it. He's too old, his, his knees have gone. He, it takes him all his time just to walk around the house. Uh, he's been doing little walks outside trying to get himself going, but he really struggles. Uh, and, and my mum won't come without my dad. So I know for certain that they're never, ever going to come over. And they're all leaving close friends behind. 
It's going to be really tough having to uh, start over again and possibly lose contact to my friend back in the UK. I mean, there's ways, there's internet and stuff, but it's never going to be the same. I'm going to lose them friends and have to make new friends out here, which I should do because it's so friendly out here. You can talk to anyone. So how are the Burnleys going to vote? After spending a week in Australia and experiencing Australia, our vote goes to... Australia. Australia. It's a vote for Australia, but they know it won't be plain sailing. You know, this could be the last time that we have a last Christmas in England and my parents are quite old, so you never know what's happening. You touch wood, I hope, not whatever does happen. So like, but you never know what's around the corner. Uh, so it's, with them being as old as what they are, it's, it's, it's going to be hard and it's, it's not a nice feeling. It's not a nice feeling. That'll be hard for me. There'll be plenty of tears, plenty of them. I think... I don't want to miss out on Honey for three or four years, um, but I just think that if we don't come out here and do what we want to do, then um, they could take her anywhere in the world. You know, they could they could move down south, Paul's looks at jobs in Spain. Mm -hmm. You know, he could just take her anywhere. He will go wherever the work is for him and Gemma. Um, we've got no control over that, so I think we've got to try and think of us for a while. We have, we have, definitely. The Burnleys have made a brave decision to move to Australia, leaving behind their eldest son, his partner, and of course, their first grandchild. Let's hope Paul, Gemma, and Honey Lily will follow eventually. Join us again next time when we send another family where they're wanted down under. A renovation project in a Kent village next, one of Britain's empty homes worth a look after the headlines. And then it'll be Jenny Bond with Cash in the Attic on BBC One at half past eleven. <laughs>